Hello crafty friends, are you buried in backgrounds that you don't know what to do with? Maybe you've had a gel printing session or a mixed media session, or maybe you just squirrel away unfinished backgrounds hoping that someday inspiration will strike and you'll finally know what to do with them. If that's you, then stick around because I'm going to give you 15 ideas of things to do with your backgrounds and your bits of backgrounds. But first, I thought I'd share three steps that I think will help you to not feel overwhelmed with backgrounds and bits, because it can be overwhelming when faced with all your unused prints, panels and leftovers. It's hard to find a good way of storing them as well. So the first thing to do is sort your pile of pretties into full panels and leftover bits. The bits you've trimmed off or die cut from or are not big enough to cover the front of a card or are too big to go on the front of a card. Once you've done that, set aside your full panels and take your big leftover bits and cut them down into full panels. I do this with panel dies, with my trimmer or with my guillotine, whatever takes my fancy on the day. After that, take your little bits and cut them down into neat pieces. This may seem like extra work, but I find that having neat pieces is less overwhelming than having a pile of raggedy bits. It helps me to see the woods for the trees. Once you've done that, you should have two neat, organised piles of panels and pretty pieces that you can then use to make some cards, which is exactly what we're going to do now. Right, so the first way to use our backgrounds or pattern paper, all of these techniques I'm going to talk about today can be done with pattern paper because really your backgrounds are just homemade pattern paper. And number one is the absolute easiest. Take a full panel, add some glue onto the back and pop it on a card blank. This one is four by six inches and this card panel is slightly smaller than that. So it's going to give me a nice white border all the way around the outside. Now we've got a really lovely, bold, bright, shimmery panel. I believe this one was one I made either during or in preparation for one of my Pigment Powder 101 videos. And all I'm going to do is add a little bit of glue to the back of this die cut sentiment. So I die cut the sentiment out of gold foil cardstock and the shadow out of vellum and we can add that to our background like that and of course you could add more to this you could add a couple of other die cuts you could have stamped on the background before you'd stuck it down you could have run it through an embossing folder to give it some texture you could have done some heat embossing on it or some stenciling on it but number one, the simplest way is just to use a full panel, stick it on a card and then add something on top. And in much the same vein, you can, instead of adding a full panel to a card, you can add a partial panel to a card. So what have we got here? We've got this blocky inked background. To create this background, I took some Catherine Pooler mini ink pads, which are rectangle and just pressed them down on the card overlapping them and making a nice pattern. I'm going to add this like this coming in from the top and I'm going to take a pair of scissors and just trim that off so you could have that like that. You could even take another bit and have it coming in like that. And for my sentiment, I've got this happy birthday that I stamped with black ink on white card. And that can go there, like that. So they have a very colourful but flat card, so easy to send through the post. 
made using a full panel but instead of just sticking it on the card we chopped it up and stuck it in from different angles and added a sentiment now again you can add partial panels shall we call them but you don't have to cut up a full panel to do that if you've got some little bits and bobs you could add strips going up and down the card like that or across the card like that or diagonally along the card like that so you can use your bits as well as your panels to create panels on the card so in my recent series my don't regret it use it gel print edition series i made lots of gel prints and i cut them down to full size panels just to make them more usable for me so i could stick these either as whole pieces or partial pieces down to my card blank but i'm not going to do that i'm going to do number three which is torn edge layering for this i'm going to work on a panel of smooth white cardstock and i'm gonna stick a sheet of self-adhesive adhesive and we'll take that off so we've got our sticky exposed i'm going to take these and tear strips off of them that's going to be a bottom strip a top strip is going to be complete that's going to be my pink then i want some yellow Put that on next. And then I'm going to add some of this turquoise colour. And then this bluey bit. And then this purpley bit down the bottom. I'll just take the excess off this end. And I'm going to cut this down so it's all nice and tidy around the edges. And now that can be glued onto the front of the card blank. And obviously you can add some die cuts to the top of that and a sentiment to the top of that. And I really like that torn edge look. If you feel like some of your edges are peeling up a bit, just pop a little bit of glue under and that will keep everything down. And of course now you've got these partial panels that have torn edges, but you could create another one or maybe even two cards like this out of what's left. Okay, the next thing you can do with your backgrounds or partial backgrounds, bits of backgrounds, is die cut from them. You don't have to use your full panels as full panels. You can cut them up with dies or punch them with punches. I find this is a great way to get through these little scraps of background. And having them cut down neatly and stored in this box makes it really easy to flick through and select something that will work with what you have in mind. So here I've just used some dies to make some postage stamps, shapes, some circles, I've got some little flowers, some hearts, and obviously you can cut whatever you like out of your backgrounds or bits of backgrounds. So I've got these postage stamps, and my idea was to have maybe a rainbow of postage stamps. Some of these are gel prints, and some of them are just stenciled bits and smushed bits. So I thought I'd turn this into a Get Well Soon card. And I can have my postage stamps arranged like that with a Get Well Soon sentiment stamped there. I put foam tape on the back of each of these postage stamps. And I'm using my T-square ruler to get them lined up. 
on the front of my card like that I think. If you were going to do this card before you put foam tape on the back of your squares and stuck them down you could stamp some images so you had images on your squares but I've got these little flowers that I cut out for some from some other bits of background and I'm going to add this not to every square but to I think one two three and at the moment they're a bit flat but once the glue is dried you can flick up the petals a bit and for flower centers I've got some enamel dots you could use Nouveau drops or you can make your own flower centers with uh, die cutting circles out of different colored cardstock and there we have a very simple get well soon card and I've got two of each of those left over so I could make two more cards I've got plenty of flowers and enamel dots so again I can make two more cards with those Our next thing to do with backgrounds and bits of backgrounds is die cut sentiments, numbers, words, letters out of them. Again, this is particularly suited perhaps to your box of bits, but you can still die cut out of full panels. So here for this, I took a panel that I made, I think it was with pigment powders. So they're orange and a little bit sparkly. And for this one, I cut the sentiment out of the orange panel and stuck it on a black shadow. For this one, I cut the shadow out of the orange panel and popped a black sentiment on top. This one, again, it was cut from the orange panel and put on a white shadow. And I used a halo die to die cut out these letters from a bit of orange. So not only have I got these letters, I've got their outline as well, which I could use. So for this card, I'm going to use the big happy birthday sentiment with the shadow cut from my background. And I'm going to use this background as the background to this card. I made this one, I think, during the Pigment Powders 101 series. It's a bit short for the card, so I'm going to cut the card down ever so slightly so now it's got a nice border around the outside I'm also going to add this mesh die cut that I've cut from white card so it will tie the foreground whoops, and background together because I've got white here and white here and over the top of the mesh and in the middle just above the center of the card there I've put my happy birthday which is on craft foam so it's got a nice bit of dimension and I'm going to bring some more white in by adding some white Nouveau drops around the sentiment area now these might absorb some of the color from the pigment powder that I used on the background but that's okay I don't mind that and there we have it. I think that makes quite a statement. The orange and the teal colour are sort of complementary colours and work nicely together. And the black and the white really bring it all together and make everything pop. So that was number five. Die cut sentiments, words, letters, numbers out of your backgrounds and bits of backgrounds. Now we're on to number six, and that is to use your backgrounds with cover plate dies. So I've got this happy birthday cover plate die, which cuts out this shape. And I'm gonna keep that. And I'm also going to cut it out of one of my backgrounds. And I'm gonna line this up so that it is roughly centralized like that. I do apologise for any banging noises you can hear in the background. There's yet more building work going on in my neighbourhood. So my background is cut nicely, but I'm going to leave it there until I'm ready for it. I've got this cover plate die cut that I'm going to add to this 5x7 card blank, but I will trim it down as it is a bit too big. But before I do that, 
I'm going to, and I can get my fingers off, I'll leave that there. So I've stuck myself to it. I'm going to pop this on here and press it down. So now I've got sticky gaps. And I think you can probably see where this is going. I'll take the backing off of this. Just peel it down a slightly there. Get this lined up where I want it. Press that down and then pull this down here. So that's all stuck there with sticky gaps. And now I can trim my card down. But all I'm going to do, oops, hopefully, without losing any bits, is inlay into there and one of the easiest ways I think of doing that is lining your top die cut up over the sticky bits and hopefully they'll be in the right place which they are more or less you can just shuffle them around And once you've done the pressing in from the die cut, you can also use the bits that are stuck in there. Now, where's that bit come from, she says. And it looks like a really long process of getting everything lined up. But if you do it like that, it's really quick. So that one is complete now. All the bits are in place. If things aren't quite where you want them, you've probably got a little bit of time to shuffle them around a bit, you know, just tuck them in. But you've also got this bit left over, which you can use on top of another card. You could just leave it like that. You could put maybe some glitter paper behind it, or you could cut another white one and inlay white or gold or whatever you like into the gaps. So number six is use cover plate dies with your backgrounds and do an inlay technique. And if you do this kind of thing, you will get two cards for the price of one background. If you didn't fancy going to all the trouble of inlaying with more intricate dies, you could do a faux inlay technique. So this is my cuttle bug sandwich. I use the thick plate, one of the cutting plates, the rubber mat, the background and the die and this should emboss the pattern rather than cut it and then the other plate on top so i hope you can see on here that the die has embossed its pattern onto this background i've also used the die to cut a die cut from white cardstock and i'm going to put glue all over the back of that and now I can put this die cut on top of my background, locking the raised portion of the background from the embossing into the apertures of the die cut. And it looks as if you have inserted the background into, inlaid it into the white die cut. So you may not be able to see that very clearly on camera, but the raised portions are pushed up through the apertures of the white die cut and that can be used on top of a card. Our next technique is to take a background and stamp an image on it. I'm using this flower stamp and I'm stamping it in stays on because it's waterproof ink and I'm stamping it straight on my background. I'm also going to stamp some leaves. So I've made this mask out of post-it or sticky notes. I'll just line that over my image.
And before I remove my mask, I'm going to add colour to my leaves using the stencil that came with this set. And just put on some Distress Oxide in Bundled Sage and you can see through. Let me see if I can line this one up right. There we go. And you can see through to the pattern in the background and that's absolutely fine. And I'm going to stamp those images again because Distress Oxide can dull down black ink. Now I'm going to use this stencil to colour my flower with warm lipstick which is, I think it might be the colour that I used in the background. So that's tying my foreground and background. I'm going to go in with my next darkest colour, get this in roughly the right place and add some picked raspberry. This is going to be some of the shadowy areas. And now I've got seedless preserves for a bit of extra darkness and depth around the shadow areas. And I think a little bit of spice marmalade over the worn lipstick in the middle. So this is technique number eight. Stamp an image on your background and colour it in. And being able to see some of the background through the stamped image can be quite a nice effect. But there we go, number eight. Right, we're on to number nine now, and that is to use your backgrounds to back an aperture. So I've used an aperture die, this one from Sizzix, to cut an aperture in a piece of smooth white cardstock. And this is a background I made using the bubble and washing up liquid pigment powder technique I showed in one of my pigment powder 101 videos and I'm going to pop it behind there probably maybe I think maybe use that area but to make it a bit more interesting I'm going to do a couple of things to it I'm going to splatter some metallic paint on it and then I'm going to run it through my cuddle bug with an embossing folder. I'm going to use this darkish gold colour because I think it will stand out nicely on the greeny blue colour background. So I've used a cuddle bug folder there and it's got a bit of a damask type pattern on it. I'll draw around here because I don't need the bottom portion. Cut that off. And I can trim this down and put it back in my box of bits or I might use it to create something to go on top of the aperture and to give it a bit of dimension, a bit of lift. I'll add foam tape to the back. Now taken off all the release paper, I can get that lined up on there like that. And that will go on top of the card like that. And that's technique number nine. Use your backgrounds to back an aperture. For idea technique number 10, I've taken these four background panels and two stitched diamond dies and cut out four diamonds from each panel. And I've covered a piece of smooth white cardstock with double-sided adhesive. And all I'm gonna do is quilt a pattern using my diamonds here. Now I've covered most of the white cardstock with my diamonds, I'm going to trim it down. And now I should be able to use 
the leftover bits to fill in any gaps. Now I can trim off the overhang again. Now I could tidy that up nicely and get everything straight and lined up, or I could die cut something from that. I could use this tag die, for example, and line everything up and cut out a tag. It obviously isn't quite long enough to do the full tag, but that's okay. So there we have our tag. I'm just gonna bevel the bottom edge to make it look as if it was die cut. Add some glue onto the back of this and place it in the bottom left corner of this 5x7 card blank. To embellish this tag, I've used this die to cut a gold lined heart. And my sentiment is celebrate, which is black on white, and I've popped it on craft foam. And now I can add it here. And I've also got some more gold foiled circles, which I can add as little embellishments. So idea number 10 is to cut from your backgrounds geometric shapes that tessellate that fit together in a quilting type pattern. Stick them down onto a bit of cardstock and then either use it as a whole panel or die cut something from it. Idea number 11 involves nesting dies. So I've got a set here of nesting star dies and I'm going to choose every other star and I've got a sticky note here that I'm going to place my big star on then I'm going to get my next one and line it up so that there's roughly an equal size gap all the way between them and the same again here and then the same again with the little one. Make sure they're all stuck down well because I don't want them to move. And then I've got some backgrounds here. I think I will use, let's have a look, this shimmery green background, which I made using a DIY shimmer spray. And this purple one, which again is uh, made from pigment powders, I think. And cut this out of both of them. So what I have now is a series of star frames which I can use as frames. I could fill the frames with uh, vellum or another pattern paper or another background and use them individually on a card. So let's take a five by seven card here so I could have my star frames scattered across my card front like this including the little interiors and as I say you could fill the frames with glitter paper or vellum or turn them into shaker cards that kind of thing or what you can do is you can let's get another bit of sticky so we've popped the purple one down there and then we get the next size down green one and then the next size down purple one and then the little green one we can stick in the middle and we can do the same thing with the other bits like that and now we've got two complete stars and they could go on a card somehow obviously you stick them down permanently to the card base you could if you wanted to add 
one of your stars flat like that and then pop the next one up on foam tape and then add the middle one there flat like that and then pop the next one up on foam tape just to give variation in dimension. So that's idea 11. Use your nesting dies to create frames that then you can use in different ways. Right, we are now on to technique or idea number 12 and that is to use your panels to create fractured cards. So I'm going to cheat a little bit with this and not cut the background up and piece it all together. I'm going to make it look as if I've kind of pieced it together. So I've got a square there, a white cardstock square that I've placed in the top left corner and made sure that the points are running straight down like that. And now I have some strips of black card that I've cut using a strip die. And I shall add these around my square with a bit of glue. So you start your strip at the corner and then just run it to the edge of the card. Once those are stuck in place, you can snip off the overhang and then you can mount your panel onto some black cardstock when you can get the glue to come out and then you could add a die cut onto your little white square. I'm just going to use a gold one. Now we can add sentiment. This is just a pre stamped sentiment black ink on white cardstock and I put it on a bit of craft foam for dimension and for a bit of extra dimension and sparkle and shine I've got some gold Nouveau drops we can put a couple in each segment so here we have number 12 a French card made with a panel that I stamped using, I think Catherine Pula inks that I put on a rubber stamp and then spritzed with water before I pressed it down so it gave it a bit of a watercolory effect. Right, we are on the home stretch now with number 13 and that is shaker cards. So I've created a front panel, it's got some acetate behind it and two layers of foam tape. This is one of the bits from my bits box and I'm going to use that to back the aperture. But to fill my aperture, I'm going to cut some circles from this other bit of background, which has been embossed with an embossing folder and then filled with gold glitter. And the yellow and gold will go well with nicely with a pink and gold there. So now I've got a nice little pile of bits to go in my shaker and they're double sided because they're yellow on one side and yellow and gold on the other. Now I can take my bit of background and pop that over there and there's a shaker. I can add a frame to that, sentiment, a die cut and pop it on a card. So number 13, make shaker cards from your leftover bits and backgrounds you can use them to back your aperture but you can also use them to make the bits that go in the shaker idea number 14 is to make gift tags for your present so strictly speaking this isn't a card as such but it is meant to go with a present obviously you can keep these as simple or as ornate as you like. For this one, I'm just gonna add a tassel. Then it could be used as a bookmark. So again, that's another thing you could use your backgrounds for, a bookmark. And you could choose something else from your box of bits to die cut from. 
have a sentiment to put on the front of your gift tag. If this gift tag is going to double as a bookmark, you probably don't want to add too much dimension to it. So we've got a little green and gold heart there. And I'll trim this down to so it's a little bit smaller, I think. I've actually chopped that into two words. So it'll say happy birthday and they'll be slightly wonky just for a bit of whimsy. And that's idea 14. Use your backgrounds to make gift tags or bookmarks or both. And now we are on to our final idea. Our final technique, and that is to make a collage masterboard. This is ideally suited, I think, to using your box of bits that you can always uh, cut up or tear up full panels. And the idea is to use lots of bits and create lots of layers and lots of overlaps and make a whole sheet out of lots of little bits and bobs. I'm using matte gel medium to do this but you could probably do this using stick glue. I'm not going to go into much more detail than use some kind of glue to stick everything down because there is on my channel a video all about making collage masterboards and I will link to that in the video description if you would like to go and watch that to get the nitty gritty details. Well, once you've done this, you can stamp on it, you can stencil on it, you can paint on it, you can draw on it, you can do whatever you like. You can add in some book pages, you could add in some patterned papers. And then you can make things from it. You can cut it down into panels that you might use, or you could die cut shapes from it. So as I say, do check out my collage masterboard video, which will be linked in the video description just click the more arrow and you'll be able to find it there and that's it that is the 15th way create a collage masterboard from your backgrounds and bits of backgrounds and that brings us to the end of our 15 ways to use your backgrounds in card making i hope you've enjoyed the video i hope it's given you lots of ideas things to try with your own backgrounds as i said at the start you don't have to just use backgrounds for this all these techniques you can do with patterned paper i think this video now has gone on long enough so well done if you've got this far into the video if you'd like to see more videos from me do subscribe and ring the notification bell i've got over 100 videos on my channel already so you can go and watch those if you like and I hope to see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.